Hello, Matt Davis here with more quiz help. This one is from the review quiz for Chapter 7. In 2011, Americans on average consumed 47.3 gallons of soda per year with a standard deviation of 30.581 gallons. A health organization wants to estimate the average annual soda consumption for Americans by using a random sample of size 214. If they will consider it acceptable if their estimate is within 2.75 gallons of the true mean, determine the probability that their sample of size 214 will result in a point estimate with an acceptable amount of sampling error. So we're going to start off with making a few changes so that I'm giving help rather than answers. So we're going to change the mean to 46.3 gallons. And then we're going to change the sample size from 214 to 219. They have that in a couple spots here, so we'll change both of those. And then finally, we're going to change the acceptable amount of sampling error from 2.75 gallons to 2.25 gallons. All right, from there, let's go ahead and get started. We'll focus initially on what is it they want us to find. They want us to determine the probability that their sample of size 219 will have an acceptable amount of sampling error. So it's a probability question that they're asking us to find. It's about the sampling error being acceptable, which means it would be less than 2.25 gallons of error. So that's where we're going to start, and then we're going to start gathering some information to go further from there. So first of all, this 219 right there, that's N. And a key thing to note about that N, by the way, is that it's greater than or equal to 30. We'll come back to that in a moment. They gave us the population mean as 46.3, so we'll note that. And they gave us the population standard deviation as well. They said that was 30.581. All right, now that we've gathered that information, let's go ahead and continue on over here. So we want to translate what does this mean, the probability that the sampling error would be less than two and a quarter. And the key there is to look at what we're trying to estimate. We're trying to estimate the true mean. So when you're doing an estimate of the true mean, your estimate is x bar. So having sampling error that's less than 2.25 is a statement about having x bar that's within 2 and 2.25 of the true mean. So the true mean is mu, which is 46.3. So we want our x bar to land somewhere between 46.3 minus 2.25 and 46.3 plus 2.25. And as long as x bar is in that range, it's going to be acceptable. And then if you just do the subtraction and the addition right here and there, then you can simplify this a little bit. And you end up with a probability that 44.05 is less than x bar is less than 48.55. So we want to do this probability question right here. That's what we're going to be trying to answer in this problem. And since it's a probability question about x bar, we need to make sure we know the mean of x bar, the standard deviation of x bar, and the distribution of x bar. And as we summarize that, we're really answering the previous question to this one. So let's start off with the, mu, the mean and standard deviation of x bar. So mu of x bar is always equal to mu. So mu of x bar is equal to mu, which in this case is 46.3. And sigma of x bar is approximated by sigma over the square root of n, which in this case would be 30.581 divided by the square root of our sample size, which is 219. And I'll just speed this along and tell you the answer to that piece. So sigma of x bar ends up being 2.0665. You do want to make sure you use five significant figures on your sigma x bar to make sure that you can get uh, z scores that are reliable. The other thing you need to know is the distribution of x bar. And because n is 219, which is greater than or equal to 30, that implies that x bar is going to be normal. So we're going to have a normal distribution for x bar with a mean of 46.3 and a standard deviation of 2.0655. So 
having that information available allows us to go on and calculate this probability. We can calculate the probability by using the area under a normal curve. So we'll start off drawing the bell shape. In the center, we'll put the mean of x bar, 46.3. Then we'll put our two boundaries on, 44.05 and 48.55. And this is the curve for x bar. And we want to know this area in the middle right here. Whatever that area is, that's going to be the probability we're looking for. So when we find that area, we'll have found the probability. So to do that, we want to use normal CDF. To use normal CDF, we need z-scores. So let's start off finding the z on the left. We'll call that z1. That would be 44.05 minus the mean, 46.3. And then here's the tricky part. When you go to divide by the standard deviation, make sure that you use the standard deviation for x bar, not the original sigma. So we want this 2.065. We do not want that 30.581 when it comes to the denominator down here. All right, so 2.0665. And I think I'll skip the z-score calculation for speed two. Just remember that in the calculator, you need parentheses around the numerator and then round that to exactly three decimal places. That works out to be negative 1.089. And then when we calculated, or when we set this up initially, we subtracted and added the same value from the mean. So when you do that, you have symmetry. And when you have symmetry, your z-score on the right has to be equal but opposite to the z-score on the left. So this one's going to be 1.089 positive. So what does that mean? It means that we can find that area using normal CDF. And for our normal CDF, we want the left z-score to be negative 1.089, and on the right, positive 1.089. So let's switch over to the calculator, do that last bit. So we want to go into the distribution menu. So second, distribution, and then we want normal CDF with a left boundary of negative 1.089. 0.89, right boundary equal but opposite, 1.089. 1. 1. And then we usually put four decimal places on a probability, so that would be 0. 0.7238, sticking with the 8 because it's followed by a 4. So that normal CDF ends up being 0. 0.7238. And that is the area, and therefore that's the probability they requested. So that's the answer that we would put into active learning. All right, just doing a quick review of where things might have gone wrong. This is a big one right here in your z-score. Make sure that you're using the standard deviation from the x-bar, not the standard deviation of the population. And then really probably one of the big things at the beginning is just the setup to make sure that you make this translation right here, that you go from SE is less than two and a quarter to turning that into the, the plus and minus situation. And then knowing what the probability is that you need to find. And then make sure that you convert again to X bar so that you're using the correct standard deviation. But for most people, I think this is probably a translation issue. If you can read it and end up with this probability statement, then the rest is chapter six work and should go pretty smoothly. Hopefully somewhere in there you saw where it went wrong for you and you're ready to head back with more confidence. So good luck to you as you head back.